I'm Paul, and this is Jake, and we're here to tell you about semantics. Now, today as our take-home test, what we're going to be doing is asking our, ourselves the question, gee, what are the is of identity, and how come when we say something, what we really mean is our belief? And what we're going to be doing is going around to a lot of different people to find out the answer to this question. You know, you really pretty much just summed up everything that we were planning on saying in the You're right. before you started recording. So what I'm going to say right now is that when you break down the word is in the English language, you'll see that it really can't be used at all. Jakey, how come you always need to steal the spotlight from me? It's my turn now, Jakey. It's my turn. Stupid dog. No. <laughs> is really can't be used at all. We'll also learn a little rule that we like to call... Dun, dun, dun. The allness rule. It's a pretty important uh, rule in grammar, but for some reason, no one's really ever taught it anymore. So, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and go to different spots that are all familiar to you and ask people different questions. Now, there's three different questions we're going to be asking them. Now, one of them is one chosen at random, sort of like a wild card question. The other two are ones that we went over that we say, gee, it's really hard to answer false to these because all the questions are really false. So one of the questions are, is a circle round? One of the questions are. Really, personally in that, I'd probably say one of the questions is. But the other question is, a person who kills someone is a murderer. So what we're going to be doing is asking these people these questions and also taking a little bite out of culture and seeing some old reels of video from the 1950s to enrich our minds when we're not visiting the different places. So, our first stop is the Weymouth Bowl away. We're going to meet our good friend Joanne. Next, where we go, Paul? Next, we're off to the bargain here. We're going to meet our buddy Larry, the assistant manager. And after that, we're going to head off and meet our good friend Cindy. She's an entrepreneur at the Brownie Interna the International, International Brownie. Brownie place. After that, Paul? After that, we headed upstairs from International Brownie to Shaw's. Wherein, we bumped into a friend of ours who then sent us to meet Gordon. Gordon is the produce, produce manager. manager. Ooh. <laughs> From Shaw's, me and Gary took a little jaunt over to video to go. Where we met two beautiful young ladies by the names of Cindy and Colleen. They told us about the wonderful world of female actors. After that, we took our jetting o we, we jetted over to our drama rehearsal, where afterwards we got all our friends together for a nice little on is of identity. Personally, I pretty much felt like a of those old 80s teen talk shows, but it was fun. So, let's go to Bowl Away and where meet our friend Joanne. See you in a couple minutes. Oh, Jake, stay here. With my friend Joanne here at the friendly way of the bowl away. And I'm just going to ask her a few questions from our Is of Identity test from Semantics class. So, Joanne. Oh, yes, yes. One of the questions that we're going to be answering is uh, let's see, true or false? Do you think no one wants to die? I believe that's true. You believe no one wants to die? I believe that no one would want to die because I certainly they don't want to die. Okay. Um, so what was one of the other questions that we want to ask you is, all people don't kill another person is a murderer. I believe that that is true. You believe that's true? I believe that's true. Okay. And one more question for you today. Okay. Are circles round? Is a circle round? A circle is round. Yes, a circle is round. A circle is round? Yes, yes. Okay. That's all we want to ask you. Okay. Thank you very much, Joanne. Right, light. Oh, it gets hot too. Yeah, it gets hot. I answer this joke. Oh, oh, that! I'm so nervous. This is my first operation. Give up? <laughs> All right. We're here with Larry, right down in the parking here at Jackson Square here in Weymouth. We're going to ask him a few questions, also for my use of identity test. First off, Larry. It takes two to make a bargain. True or false? True. True. Okay. On to the next one. A person who kills another person is a murderer. Not necessarily. 
which we can share to explain or is not necessarily a solution to this. Well, it depends on the circumstances. There's a lot of different ways that somebody can kill another person, not always on purpose. So, therefore, I don't think that would necessarily make them a murder. Okay. So, Wonderful. And last but not least, Thank you, thank you very much. Well, folks, those of you who follow the adventures of Hank McCune from week to week have, well, you've learned to expect some pretty weird things from our boy with the king-sized ears. Now, frankly, I don't know how this is going to end, but this is how it got started. <laughs> now, listen, will you stop this stuff? Can't you see you're gonna throw us all off our course? We'll be lost. Oh, tut tut, my boy, I know these waters like the palm of my hand. Oh, yeah? Well, where are we then? Right here. alter your phone number or? No, no, I don't care. This is high school students, they'll all buy brownies. That's fine, okay, we can have as many samples. And here we go, wonderful. Okay. Are you ready? We are good to go. All right, we're here with Cindy from International Brownie in Weymouth behind uh, Charles Plaza. And Cindy, we're gonna ask you a couple questions today about our, uh, from our Keys of Identity test. Okay. Okay? Yep. Uh, they're all true or false answers, so it's pretty easy. Okay. All right, now the first question is, um, True or false? Opportunity only knocks once. I would say that's false. You say that's false. Yes. Why do you say that? Um, because I believe that we have many opportunities that will um, appear to us in life, and if you turn down one, another one will come along. It may be a little bit different, but something else will come along. Perfect. Okay, and the other one is a person who kills another person is a murderer. Yes. That's you true. believe that's true? Yes. Okay, and the next one is a circle is round. Yes. Yes, we're circling around as well. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's perfect. Thanks for watching. Find out the answers. Um, yeah, one second. <laughs> All right. Cool. Slightly spotted, polka dotted, purple cow. Well, 
Three cigarettes, the pack with the coupon on the back, and hear this. If you had a million dollars, a million, million dollars, you couldn't buy a better cigarette than Raleigh. Raleigh and the W.A. Schaefer Pen Company present television's exciting new game, Penny to a Million! <laughs> And here we go. Let's get that penny doubling, shall we, kids? Johnny, you're going to be first. We start and we go clockwise. And here we go. Your first category is called Talking About Tobacco. So let us light up and smoke out some answers. John, according to history, the fellow who introduced tobacco to England is the face on the front of the pack with the coupon on the back. Who is he? Sir Walter Raleigh. Oh, if you'd have missed that, boy. <laughs> Thank you, John. Phyllis. Headquarters for the folks who make those wonderful Raleigh cigarettes is in the Kentucky city near where the Kentucky Derby is run. What city? Louisville. Louisville is right. Charlie Metzler, here we go. Another big tobacco town is the capital of Virginia. What is it? Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Mr. Metzler. Seal Bremer. <laughs> Got a good panel over here tonight, that first one. Here we go. Uh, Seal, the state that leads the nation in tobacco production has a capital city named Raleigh, what's the state? North Carolina. North Carolina, yeah. They knew it out in the audience, too, didn't they? And here we go, back to Johnny Witherspoon. The most expensive tobacco in America, John, is grown in the shade, up in a New England state where Hartford is the capital. What's the state? Connecticut. Sure is. <laughs> okay. Phyllis Harris, down in South America, one of the big tobacco-growing countries is Juan Peron's nation. Name it. Argentina. Yes, ma'am. Charlie. Cigarette was the name of a character once played in the movies by the lovely lady who won the Oscar for her work in It Happened One Night. What was her name? That, uh, Colbert? Yes, it was. Claudette oh, Colbert. 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 Right. Okay, Steel Bremer. The great American humorist who said that the only times he didn't smoke was when he was sleeping or eating was the man who wrote Life on the Mississippi. What's his name? Mark Twain. Mark Twain or Samuel Clemens, right. Penny's doubling up, and here we go, Johnny Witherspoon. Many years ago, John, tobacco was grown as a medical herb by the natives of the country where President Cortinas succeeded President Aleman. Name me the country. It's Mexico. Mexico is right. <laughs> Very good, Sam. All right, red-headed Phyllis Harris, our little mermaid. Is your tail cool in that water? Here we go. The man credited with beginning the culture of tobacco at Jamestown back in 1612, began the t t tobacco culture, was John Ralph. He married another famous character in American history. Who was she? Uh, Pocahontas. Pocahontas, are you right? Charlie Metzler. <laughs> Mr. Metzler from Kansas City, listen to this tobacco quote, Charlie. A lone man's companion. A bachelor's friend, a hungry man's food, and a chilly man's fire. There's no herb like it under heaven. So wrote Charles Kingsley in a very famous book. Name the book, Charles. I'm sorry, Charlie. It was Westward Ho. But you get yourself a $25 bond from Jay Stewart for Raleigh's and, of course, a carton of king-sized Raleigh cigarettes, the pack with the coupon on the back. Thank you, Charles Metzler. Is a circle round? True or false? False. 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 And do you want to explain why or no? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question is: um, Is a person who kills another person a murderer? False. 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 No. You know, okay. Next one is: um, Women, mu women movie stars are beautiful. False. 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 Now, do you want to try to explain that one? Up on Cloud Nine, starring.
starring Sue Randall and Theodora Davin. Hi, I'm Joe Thomas. And I'm Libby Marshall. Glad, Glad to, have to have you aboard. aboard. Your Captain George Ward joins me in wishing you a pleasant trip. Thank you. Honestly, some people get me this, get me that. Never please. What do you need? Coffee. Oh, that Mr. Sharp in D1. The one who looks like a bulldog. He acts like he's the only one on the plane. Maybe he's the one. Yeah, the checker. No, he's too obvious. He looks like a Gestapo man. He picked someone you wouldn't suspect. Like who? Oh, that mousy little guy across the aisle, Dieterly. The one who combs his hair over his bald spot to hide it. Well, he's smarmy enough to do that. He could even be Benoff. Uh, I think he's here in case of emergency. You know, they tie a rope to him and we go by blip. <laughs> you know, looking at possibility, it doesn't have to be a man. You're so right. That blabbermouth, Mrs. Gorson at H1, looks like she'd just love to spy on people. Yeah, and what about the one next to her? She's a real sneak. How do you know? That book she's been reading. The title on the jacket is The Philosophy of Science. So? The book inside is Peyton Place. <laughs> It is. No reason to worry about the report. Look. Oh, I see. The cabin speaker's on. The cabin speaker's on? They heard every word we said. What are we going to do? Oh, I, don't, I don't think they heard very much. We weren't that close to the microphone. Close enough. How about some food? Yeah. Yes, sir? Miss Thomas? Yes, sir? Belly time. On the double, Miss Thomas. Yes, sir. Do you know what he said? He said belly time. I don't remember learning that at school. What is it? What could it be? Belly time? Belly landing? We're going to crash land, Libby. What do we do? Well, keep calm. Where's the manual? The manual. The manual's in here. He, he didn't sound excited. Maybe it's just an ordinary crash landing. Emergency procedures. Emergency landing. Seat belts must be fastened. All sharp objects out of pockets. Heads down on pillows and laps. Dentures must be removed. Oh, please be calm, everybody. There's nothing to worry about. Captain Ward is an excellent pilot. Well, and this isn't his first emergency landing. Why, well, he's probably done this a dozen times. How you doing, Mrs. D? You have now entered Mining Garrett's element. Yes, we're on the high school stage. Um, and with me is a small contingent of the Weymouth High drama click. Yes, class, I am using my famous quotes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go around really quick, have everybody introduce themselves, just a first name, because we always gave everybody else's first name. Okay, go. Mark. Josh. Tim. Chris. Justin. Carrie. Chris. <laughs> Jameson. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he's the last name basis here at Women's Drama. Now, as you all know, as we've done with everyone else, years of identity test. You can ask them all three questions. They're all going to get the big two together. I'm going to give them each an individual question. We here at Weymouth High like to think the drama club are the smartest kids in the school, and pretty much we are. So I'm willing to bet most of them are going to get it right. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll see what happens, OK? All right, guys, you guys ready? You don't have any jobs this class. Let's do it. Yeah. Here we go. Question number one. <laughs> is this the big one? It's the big cue. The circle Q. is round. True or false, guys? Let's hear it. True or false? Circle round. I say true. It's a tough one. True. Sure, true. Okay, yeah. True. 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 I'm gonna have to go with false. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a circle is round. True. True. Okay. They all said true. He was he was influenced by vegetarians. Yes. <laughs> Next question, guys. You ready? This is a tough one. A person who kills someone is a murderer. True. True. False. What is this all leading to? <laughs> well, true. 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 Chris says true for anyone who didn't hear. True. True. I wait, wait. Still. Yeah, go. I'm going to say false. I'm going to have to go with false, too. Okay. Now, I sense something coming up. Here, here we go. 
Here's the big ones. These are the questions for everybody. I'm going to start with Mark. Other answers? Mark. <laughs> Pretty girls are stuck up. True or false? Do I have to pick one or the other? <laughs> yes. <laughs> false. We get a false remark on that one. Okay. Josh. This, there is one basic cause for all effects. <laughs> Not as a special effect. You know? Could you explain the question? <laughs> Josh said true to that one, for anybody who didn't hear it. <laughs> I think you're just too stupid. Tim Shaw? Yeah, okay. A boy who won't fight is a coward. False. He's not a man. Chris. I call you too. Chris Carr. <laughs> yes, Paul Boyd. Stage managers. Oh, God. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's <laughs> Nazis. True. Hey. <laughs> dreams often foretell our lives. Is this dreams always foretell our lives? Dreams or? often. Okay, Pre often foretell our lives. False. It's priest's tale. False. You know, <laughs> thank God that's <laughs> false. Because if you ever heard any of the conversations at our lunch table, you'd be very glad. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Justin. We're not going by what you guys say. A piece of iron is heavy. This for our big buff <laughs> drama guy. Iron, heavy. Yes, no. True, false. False. False, okay. Oh, I would overanalyze oh, oh. that one right there. Yeah, <laughs> I would have said too. Carrie, I would have said in relation to. Carrie? Well, like that kid Carrie's our, our resident deacon. <laughs> Ministers <laughs> are good men. Huh. Oh. Oh. Tales, oh. oh. Canterbury Tales, Tales, yet again! Welcome oh, back to the Canterbury Tales! Questions. What? Chris! Yes! The sky is blue. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say Chris false. is our resident idiot, by the way. <laughs> it's not always blue, so false. And finally, last but not least, Gibson. Actually, Anyone? I have to give this one to Gibson, because hey. Gibson's our resident communist. <laughs> Hey, anyone, hey. anyone who talks against our no, country should be imprisoned. That's a tough. One. Well, are they foreigners or are they anyone? From the, country? the question was: <laughs> Anyone who talks understand? against our country should be imprisoned. Well, I'm gonna go with false because it could be like a debate team. And maybe it's against and that's Why that's do you sucks. get an undecided call? Because you guys oh, aren't you as good as me. <laughs> hey, this is a Gypsy, semantic thing. <laughs> but he's using semantics. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. He, he swore with semantics. We, we haven't made it to the swear word section yet. Now, Did he really mean what he said? Guys. You know, Garrett, I just got such a great brainstorm idea like this. Bam. We can use these people to demonstrate our idea. During class? No, right now. Oh. Right on, right on the top of there, it says the is of identity <laughs> test. In semantics class, we learned, go. As we were learning, is can actually really never be used in a sentence. For example, who stole my test? You did. Give it to me. Give it to me. Huh? <laughs> He's helpless without it, Tim. We'll go with, <laughs> a circle is round. One of the questions we gave out to all of you in the question that each and every one of you said, true. true. Yep, each and every it. one of you Answers is wrong. completely wrong. Okay, and then what is a circle? What is it? A circle is a representation of a round figure oh, one. Okay. Second of all, I know it. Who knows? <laughs> geometry. Going way back to geometry. What is the definition of a circle? Anyone? Does anyone remember? Yeah, I do. A collection a, of non-collinear points. It's a collection of non-collinear points where each point is equidistant from the. Uh, Center. 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 Origin. Now, going way back to geometry again, what's the definition of a point? Uh, a dot. A point is a some, a dot. Essentially yeah. a little thing that was made up by Descartes to uh, represent a piece of information. It can be. Okay, Euclid, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> something that can be. Uh, okay, it can be represented that by three axes. A what? point is something that can be graphed. Yeah, Does well. the geometric definition of a point it actually doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. It's just any place in nature, correct? Okay, sure. Therefore, if 
the circle is made up of points. Them. Does that mean geometry? Doesn't mean the circle doesn't, doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Yeah, okay. Correct, guys? Yeah, I got you. I think I think the uh, creators of Sesame Street might argue with you. <laughs> now, and today's semantics project is brought to you by the letter O. <laughs> Has anyone here at this, on this, besides myself, heard of a grammar rule called the Aldous rule? Uh, yes. Justin. No, I do not remember what it is, but I've heard of it. Can anyone define the Aldous rule? I couldn't even figure it. I didn't know what it was. Okay. I had any idea. What the Aldous rule is? <laughs> You all know what you understood is, correct? Yes, yes, yes unfortunately. Yeah. The allness rule is pretty much all understood. In a sentence like, mules are stubborn, it is actually saying, all mules are stubborn. All mules are stubborn. Now, are all mules stubborn? Nope. No, yes. nope. I'm not dead. Yes, they are. Therefore. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty easy. Hey, 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 hey you tried to wake them up. He's pretty Therefore, stubborn. Therefore, <laughs> every <laughs> single statement. On this entire test, not one of these statements can be true. What if on the statement just Paul is wearing khaki? Or khakis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, you're using a screwball. You're using qualifiers. Take semantics for all of your juniors and sophomores. Sure. Already in yeah. a Yeah, yeah you're just looking for that up. A, huh? <laughs> and hope you get Mrs. Doherty because she's the best semantics. Woo! Now. That was our little uh, section and our little take-home test, so to say, on would like to talk about the principal cause of divorce, marriage. Now, I have here a letter from a certain Mrs. A.K. of Countdown, Georgia. And she writes, Dear Professor, my husband and I had a terrible fight at the dinner table. When he went out for a walk just to cool off, I put a lighted candle in the window and went to bed. That was 13 years ago, and he still isn't back. I'm beginning to worry. I'm running out of candles. <laughs> well, now, Mrs. K, if your husband has been walking for 13 years, he doesn't need a light a candle. He needs a compass. <laughs> Maybe your husband has become tired of your cooking. Or he may have even been a little piqued with you. <laughs> Either way, it's not a serious problem, and I'm glad to see that you aren't discouraged. Remember, you have enjoyed the richest experience that marriage can bring a woman, having her husband leave her. <laughs> Since you so obviously want your husband back, it is important for you to let him know you are willing to let bygones be bygones and start all over again. <laughs> you know, you can't help admiring a man who was so consistent. No wonder you miss him so. Therefore, you must do everything in your power to get him back. Follow every lead that might give you some clue to his whereabouts. Leave no stone unturned. <laughs> Eventually, your love will triumph and you and your husband will be reunited. And when he returns, give him all the tenderness and affection of which I know you are capable. Make sure that he never leaves you again. <laughs> Remember, it's the soft cell that's more effective in the long run. I do hope, madam, that this brief estrangement will point out to you an important truth to wit. What the Lord hath joined together, nothing can tear asunder as quick as a lousy cook. Good luck to you both. This 
This is the Jake, how you doing? Hey Jake, thanks for Oh Jake, oh, I'm sorry we made dramatics dinner time. Sorry isn't we it? left you at home. Man. Okay. Anyway, we learned an awful lot today and we met an awful lot of fun people. Yes we did. And you know what? We even have proof. Look, Larry at the Bargainer gave us these neat eyes. Ooh. Our friend Cindy at International Brownies gave us some free brownie samples. This one's called the Almond Joyous. It has coconuts and almonds and chocolate. This one is just their regular old naked fudge brownie. It's just chocolate. I think there might be a few nuts in there, but I'm not really sure. And naturally, another one of our personal favorites, Gordon, he gave us these bananas. He has the biggest bananas as a produce manager. You know, I've never actually met a produce manager before. Me neither, Paul. They're the greatest people, though. They'll find you the freshest cucumbers, too. Anyway, we had a great time today journeying into the world of semantics. And we met some awfully interesting people. Now, you know how you eat the top of that banana? No, do you want it? Yeah. Okay. Should I give it to the dog? Yeah, he needs a, he deserves a snack. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so what did we learn today, Paul? We learned that people's beliefs don't necessarily reflect what they're saying, and words don't even reflect what they're talking about. What else did we learn, Paul? We also learned, once again, dun dun dun, the oldest rule! It's a personal favorite of ours, in case you haven't been able to tell yet. Now, good banana? Red banana. <laughs> Go see Gordon, he'll set you up with good bananas. And he can even give you golden apples. Mm. Yes, that's right. Oh. Golden apples. Golden apple. So, yeah. we hope you enjoyed our semantics project. And I hope you enjoyed my butt. So, have a good day, Mrs. D. And Mr. D, if you're watching. Which I'm sure you probably will. Yeah. Because you guys seem to be the greatest couple on the face of the earth. You share everything. Yeah. And that's cool. Especially the greatest teacher in the world. Yes. The greatest. So, we hope you have a good day. And we'll see you in class as soon as we can. Bye. 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 Don't want this anymore. <laughs> Paul! Oh my god! Why? Turn up your music. All right. Now shake it. Make it. Do your thing like man. Liven up the party. Teddy Bong goes super bad. There's never been anything like it. Belly Bongo, the fabulous, fun-filled fad that's creating belly laughs all over America. What a way to get a party moving. All you need is a little music and Belly Bongo. You've heard about it, but you've got to try it to believe it. Get a Belly Bongo, strap it on tight. Turn up your music. All right. Now shake it, make it, do your thing like man. Liven up the party. Belly Bongo's super bad. Here's how to order your belly bongo. That's right, smile. Now take a bow, just bow right to this counter. Take a bow, how do you bow? That's right, now bow again, bow again. All right, now go right and slow. That's right. Go right and slow. All right. Tammy, I hear you won three big contests. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. What were they? They show you double contest, the, the Hadi G small contest, and uh, and another contest. Uh huh. How old are you, Tammy? Five. And uh, what cities did you visit on this contest? Chicago, Illinois, Detroit, and Texas, Texas, and uh, and Washington D.C. and a lot of other states. Isn't that wonderful? Did you have a good time? Yes. And tell me about your pets. How many pets have you got? I used to have three, but now I have two. Well, do you tell your daddy what happened to them on the other side of them over there. <laughs> what happened? Well, when, um, Patty got run over because there were holes in the fence. And who is Patty? My dog, my grown-up dog, though. Your grown-up dog? Yes, yeah, she's a collie. Uh-huh. And you're going to get another dog? Uh-huh. I, I have a puppy, and, uh, my, and my daddy promised me he'd get another dog. Were you sad when the dog got run over? Uh-huh. And show me how sad you were. I was so sad I was crying. And show me how, you, how sad you were. 
I cried for two days, but I can't show you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because I get, because um, when, I, when I'm sad, I'm really sad. Oh, when you're sad, you're really sad. Mm -hmm. huh? Cute kid, but can she sing? Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Johnny, so long at the fair. He promised to bring me a bunch of blue ribbons. He promised to bring me a bunch of blue ribbons. He promised to bring me a bunch of blue ribbons to tie up my bonny brown hair. Okay, so she can sing. But can she act? Uh, take one. This is a scene from the Wild Sea, the Bad Sea. Now, well, okay. Look at her, sitting in her little chair, doing her nails, looking so cute and innocent, looking like you wouldn't melt butter. She's so cool. I've been hearing things about you that ain't nice. I mean, you know how you beat up that poor little claw in the woods and run him off the wharf. He was so scared. If you tell lies like that, you won't go to heaven when you die. I hear plenty. I listen to people talk. That's why I know what people are saying, and you don't. People tell lies all the time, but I think you tell them more than anybody else. You better listen to me if you want to keep out of bad trouble. I know what you've done to that boy when you got him on the wharf. You just better listen to me if you want to keep out of bad trouble. What did I do if you know so much? You picked up a stick and you hit him with it. You hit him because he wouldn't give you that mantle like you told him to. I thought I'd seen some mean little girls in my time. But you're the meanest. I know what you think. I know everything you think. Nobody believes what you say. You ain't no dope, I must admit. That's why you didn't leave that stick where nobody could find it. Oh, no, you got better sense than that. You took that bloody stick and you washed it off good, and then you threw it in the woods where nobody could see it. I think you're a very silly man. You that was silly because you thought you could wash off blood, and you can't. Why can't you wash off blood? Because you can't. And the police know it. You can wash and wash, but there's always some left. Everybody knows that. I'm going to call the police and tell them to start looking for that stick in the woods. You're scared about the police yourself. Shh. What you say about me, it's all about you. You better listen to me. They'll put you in that electric chair. They got pink ones for little girls and blue ones for little boys. Look at me, honey, look at me, Mary. Very wonderful scene. You played it very well. <laughs> <laughs>